does Blaze require a lot of JavaScript? In my last video, I got a question. A friend had heard from, well, his friend, that Blaze requires a lot of JavaScript. In fact, their friend even switched back to, I believe it was React, because of this. So in this video, we're going to unpack that. So what is up with all that JavaScript? Wasn't the promise no JavaScript? Now, first of all, this isn't the first time I heard this. But let's clear something up. Blazor's promise was never absolutely no JavaScript. It is all about letting .NET developers build web apps without having to rely on JavaScript for everything. Back in 2002, .NET came out and I was like super stoked. And I ran to my colleague and I said, hey, have you seen .NET? This is going to change the world. We built a product using Visual Basic and ASP. So we knew Visual Basic. So my conclusion was, well, we should go all in VB.NET. But my colleague said, no, we're not going to do that. And I'm like, what? We know VB. Of course, we're going to do VB.NET. That makes all the sense in the world. And my colleague said, no. We are going to do C Sharp. And I'm like, what? We know VB. Of course, we're going to use VB. We basically halfway there already. And he said to me that if we use VB, we will bring over our old habits, perhaps even bad habits over to .NET. And we want to start this new thing the right way. He was absolutely right. So here's the thing. Yes, Blazor allows JavaScript in drop. But that doesn't mean that you have to use it. If you want to continue using your JavaScript libraries, well, then sure, you'll need JavaScript interrupts. But most major component vendors like Telerik, Syncfusion, DevExpress, the list is long, have full Blazor libraries. Now, on top of that, there's a ton of open source Blazor libraries out there, covering almost everything you need, or heck, probably everything. And whether you're using Blazor WebAssembly or Blazor Server, Interop is always an option, but never a requirement. So what if you want to use a JavaScript library? Let's say you want to use a specific JavaScript library that you, well, must use for some reason. In that case, you can wrap it inside of a Blazor component, exposing only what you need. That way, you still get the power and, well, productivity of Blazor while using your preferred library. But for example, instead of pulling in a JavaScript-based date picker, you should use Mudblazor's built-in date picker or Telerik's or whatever library you choose. There are native Blazor alternatives for most common UI needs. So let's take a look at a quick demo. This is a source code for my deep dive Blazor course on Don't Train. I'm not going to go through everything, but I'm hoping that you're going to get the gist of what we need to do here. So let's start with the JavaScript. So what I want to do in this demo, I want to use D3.js. D3.js is a super popular sharding framework. They have lots of different components. So what I've done here is that I've taken a JavaScript, basically just took it from their homepage. I've added data because the demo that they had was hard coded. So I added a parameter for data and one for width and height. Then the rest of the script is the same script that I just took from their homepage. And if we scroll down just a little bit here, we can see that we're generating the pie chart with data and we're grabbing that data from the supplied value. Okay, so we have a little piece of JavaScript that generates the um, pie for us. Then inside our pie component or our pie chart, we have data, I have specified a model, pie chart 
model, which simply contains a name and a value. Then we are setting an ID for the component. We're setting a width, we're setting a height or a default value for width and height. And then down here on after render a sync, we are checking, do we have a JS module? If not, let's create one and then invoke it by calling in this case, create pie chart with animation. So that has a kind of a cool animation in there as well. So the JavaScript was basically the thing that I took from D3JS homepage. And then we're just going to call that JavaScript. So in this case, there's no extra JavaScript involved. And we're creating a component that we can reuse throughout our app. So let's take a look at how we can use that component. We use that component like this. Pie chart and then supply the data. Now this specific component are also generating some data here. So we are randomizing some data so that we can show that a little bit more fun demo to actually have some data in there as well. For usage is just pie chart and then supply the data. So here we have the pie chart and if I generate data, we can see that it changes with kind of a cool animation as well. But as I mentioned, Telerik, DevExpress, SyncFusion, all of these third party libraries has a pie chart as well. And again, a lot of different open source projects has pies like this. And if you take a look at this one, I mean, this one looks pretty similar and has all these things already built for us. So we don't need to grab the JavaScript library to get nice looking pies like this or graphs or whatever component it may be. So Blazor does not require JavaScript interop. In my day-to-day -day work, I rarely touch JavaScript. There are cases where JavaScript calls are needed, for example, accessing session storage or anything like that, but chances are there are already a Blazor library that handles that. So you don't have to build that yourself. Now, if you insist of sticking with JavaScript libraries instead of using native Blazor alternatives, then yes, but that comes with a cost. If you find yourself using NPM or writing a lot of JavaScript, you might be approaching the problem the wrong way. Don't try to use VB if you're writing C sharp or well, JavaScript, if you're writing C sharp would perhaps be a better analogy in this case. But one thing is certain with Blazor, you can write less JavaScript or TypeScript compared to Angular or React. Since you can wrap everything in a component, you can write a pie chart once and reuse it over and over again, writing only Razor syntax or C sharp. So what do you think? Have you run into situations where you had to use JavaScript interop? Or have you found a native Blazor solution? Let me know in the comments.